Joey, most people calculate profit wrong. What do you mean? They usually take income minus expenses to come up with it. Isn't that how everybody's supposed to do it? Not if you actually want to pay yourself profit. And that's who we're talking to and about today. We're sitting down with Suzanne Morega, a CPA and profit first professional, who's going to help us to look at the world backwards, if you will, and put profit first. So you should take your income minus your profit, and it then should determine what your expenses are. Now, in your family, backwards comes naturally. I, I remember you telling me the story this past winter when you went home and we were sitting down at dinner the other day just laughing. Just, I mean, my, my wife, we got home and she's like, I've not laughed so much in that, in that short of a time and I don't know when. And so, Joey, I want you to share a backwards story with, with our audience about your dad and the refrigerator and Santa sleigh. Wow. I mean, you just set that up so nicely. Uh, by the way, if, if we've already shared this, I, I forgive us, but it's so good. You can't just, you can't pass it up. So imagine I'm driving in to my parents' house. I've never been there. They just moved within the last two years. And uh, we're pulling into this cul-de-sac. And in the cul-de-sac, there's several vehicles. My sister's there with her husband and kids. My other sister's there. And they're off to the right. There's a big van with a trailer pulled behind it that has been turned into Santa sleigh. Okay. So just think of a pull behind trailer, but it's got lights and the carvings and things on, on the side that red and white, like Santa sleigh. And there's a refrigerator standing straight up in the middle of Santa sleigh. Okay. So first of all, I'm not shocked by this. Because <laughs> like this my, is commonplace yeah, for your dad. I'm like, well, I mean, dad's just got another project he's working on. I, I mean, it is what it is. My wife is completely like, what in the world is that? So, but then I look and at the front door, there's a lot of commotion. There's a minivan parked in the grass, backed up with the, the lift gate up in front of the door. And I thought, now that's odd. Okay. That's, that's, that's not a common, that's not situation. a typical parking maneuver. Okay. Just right in the front yard. So we pull in and we're actually later than we anticipated. Shocker with five girls stopping, uh, and a six hour tour ended up being like nine hours. Right. Okay. Six hour trip. And we pull in, we have to go in through the garage cause nobody can get in through the front door. So I'm going around the house and all of a sudden I see, my mom, my sister, my other sister, everybody is carrying food from the front door into various parts of the house. I'm talking on the kitchen table. So is it coming out of the van and they're putting it in the house? Well, I didn't know where it was coming from. Okay. I, I just, I'm just filing through and all of a sudden I see there's a refrigerator at the front door and there's straps around it. Okay. Like, you know, moving straps, like toe straps. Okay. Yeah. They're just tied around this thing. Okay. And I thought, Okay, well, this is interesting. Why? Why is there a refrigerator? Oh, well, Joe, the the refrigerator died, so we had to get a new one. And that's and what's out on Santa Slay. That's what's on Santa Slay. So the I'm starting one. to put I'm starting to put the pieces together. And then my my brother in law is standing up on a ladder on top of the old refrigerator that's at the front door, and they're just looking at me. They're like, "Yeah, we can't get this door off. We're just going to pull it." Pull it. What does that I, mean? I said, "Wait a minute. You, you're talking about pulling the refrigerator." Because then I started seeing that's that's it's tied to the back of the minivan. <laughs> okay. And they say, yeah, we're just going to pull it out the front door because it won't fit. We can't get the doors off. <laughs> so Okay. So you're what? sitting there. You're like, okay, this is odd that the minivan is connected to the refrigerator. And now you're finding out that they've, they've done all the detective work. <laughs> they, they, they've looked at this thing, evaluated it and said, okay, we can't figure out how to get the doors off of this thing. It's too wide to go through the front door. We can't lift it. We can't push it. Option three is clearly pull it. Sheer force. <laughs> okay. Columbo is on the scene and these is, this is where all the evidence lies. Pull it through the door frame as hard as you can. And maybe it'll just like magically shrink as it's going through the door frame. So, in reality, I have a nightmare going on in my in my brain that if I had showed up 
30 minutes later, there's a potential that half the front wall of this house is in the driveway. This is a total roadrunner coyote like scene right now. I just like just see the you know how like they would run through the through the wall and you'd have like the outline. <laughs> exactly. I see the outline in the front of your parents' house is the door of, of, of this refrigerator that's just just carved in it. Just crushed. Exactly. And so I, I walk up and I said, Well, they're like, Yeah, we can't get this door off, so we're just gonna pull it through. And I literally look at the top of the thing and I, I said, well, the refrigerator's dead, right? They said, yeah, it's not working. So I cut the water line. That, that's what was hanging it up? It was hanging up the door. It was holding the door on. The You know, the, the water in the door yeah. kind of refrigerators? It comes from the back, goes comes, over the top, and goes down in the hole. Yep. Yeah. I cut that and pull it off, <laughs> and then we just carry the refrigerator out the front door. Had I not been there, Russ, our entire Christmas break, would have been very breezy, okay? In, in the middle of December, just wind just blowing through a tarp. That's all I could envision. In, envision. So well, I, I that hope, was very backwards. I hope you guys enjoyed l- letting <laughs> Joey take you through this little bit of life and uh, National Lampoon's uh, Mure <laughs> style as to how to do things backwards. And I think the same thing is true with the way we calculate profit We should calculate it backwards. And in this interview, you're going to get some practical tips of not only how an entrepreneur went from uh, almost leaving her business because she was so broke and having to get a job to being successful and hire many, many more people and now teaching and coaching people all over the world on this concept. So let's join uh, Joey and I on this uh, interview with Suzanne Mariga. Welcome to the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the Wall Street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now, here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the show. We are in for a treat. We're talking profit today with Ms. Suzanne Mariga. Welcome, Suzanne. How are you? Hi, great. Thanks for be, for allowing me to be on your show. I'm excited to be here today. No, glad to have you. And I know as a CPA, you know money. You look at balance sheets all day long. You, unlike me, were able to pass intermediate accounting and kept going. <laughs> so let, let's talk about profit. Let's talk about why you love profit so much. Was there something in your in your entrepreneur journey that made you say, I need to not only be performing profit first in my own business life, but also I need to be teaching and coaching others? Yes, exactly. You know, and I and I love profit, but I'll be honest with you, I didn't always love profit. <laughs> I didn't always think about profit. I was like a lot of entrepreneurs out there, right? We start our businesses because we love what we do. We absolutely love what we do. And we love it so much that it's our gift to the world and we would do it for free because we love what we do so much. And and I was like a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, I love tax accounting. I love tax prep. I love tax strategy. And and I loved it so much that if I could help somebody else and change their life, you know, you know, I would have done it for free. And that's exactly what I did for the first three years of my business. I did it for free. You know, um, you know, I, I accepted every client that came through the door. They always needed extra help. I always spent extra time helping them if that's what they needed. And three years later, my husband told me, you know what, Suzanne, you're going to be better off if you just go back and get a J-O-B. And it was interesting mm. because I wasn't the only one like that. I wasn't the only one like that. You know, you know, I had clients year after year that were coming to me and, you know, instead of showing profit or having tax due, we were getting them thousands of dollars in earned income credit, right? That's that, that credit that the government gives you for just showing up, right? You, for not being successful, right? Mm-hmm. And these people, you know, they had, they were getting earned income credit. They had mountains of debt, right? They had mountains of debt. They had nothing to show for all their hard work, no car, no home. And I know they were working themselves to death because they would they would write me at eleven o'clock and at, at night asking me tax questions, you know. Um, and so, you know, really, you know, 
it, that started me on my mission to really start to eradicate entrepreneur poverty. And that's where I partnered with Mike Michalowicz, the Profit First Professionals team, and really set on that mission to let's let's destroy this, let's end and eradicate this entrepreneur poverty. So how did you find Mike? How did you find the book Profit First? Um, it, it, were you, you know, searching for something like this? Somebody bring it to you? Talk a little bit about that. You know, I, I go into depth in the, in the book that I'm writing, Russ, um, the, with Profit First and with Mike Michalowicz. And, and you definitely, you guys are going to want to check that book out, um, Profit First for Minority Business Enterprises. But, you know, in my mission of serving and super serving my clients and, and really competing, right, to offer my products and services at the lowest price, right? Does that story sound familiar, entrepreneurs out there? <laughs> um, you know, what was going on was, you know, I was literally just working myself to the ground, right? Right? Because when you don't have profit, you can't scale, right? You can't reinvest in your business. You can't hire A players. And you end up on this, this wheel, this hamster wheel of going around and around and around, and you just can't get off. And, and so because I couldn't hire employees, I did the work myself, right? Because I didn't want to delegate it to anybody who would mess up the work, right? And so I did it myself. And literally what would have been a 40-hour job, you know, had I never left my job, was an 80-hour job in entrepreneurship. And one day I was sitting at my desk, it was a Saturday, and I was working on a return practically, it, I'll be honest, with you, it was a free return for a, a friend of mine, because, you know, friends will always ask you, hey, can you just do my return? You, you know, you, you can do it, Suzanne. And, and literally, I was sitting at my desk, it was it was a Saturday morning, in the middle of tax season, I'd already probably clogged in 80 hours of work, and literally my lower back went out. <laughs> Oh, no. My oh. lower back right out. And so I was sitting in bed, you know, um, high on like muscle relaxers and ibuprofen from my doctor. And I literally sent out an SOS to you, a, a private Facebook book group of my friends and that were business colleagues. And I said, you know what, I can't keep going like this. I cannot keep going on like this. Something has to change. Something absolutely has to change. And one of my colleagues said, you know, you've got to read this book. You've got to read this book, Profit First by Mike McCallis. And, you know, and that day I got a tons of advice on Facebook from my Facebook friends, things like, oh, you guys, you got to fire those bad employees, you know, because you can't keep working like this, Suzanne. But the thing that resonated with me was, you know, you've got to read Profit First by Mike McCallis. And immediately I ordered the book. I ordered a book on Audible and like I was listening to Mike tell his story and I was like listening to it. And of course, you know, Mike, brilliant as he is, says, you know, by the way, you need to look at these charts. And I'm like, I can't stop and look at these charts on Audible. So I ended up buying like the Kindle version. And then the Kindle version, you know, like the charts just don't pop out. So then I ended up buying like the hardback copy. So Mike <laughs> made a lot of money from me that day <laughs> um, because I needed to see it at all three sources. And, and really, you know, it was really all about put your profit first, put your profit first. You know, too many times in business school, we're taught revenue minus expenses equals profit, right? And what happens when we teach our business owners that literally what we're teaching them is sell, 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 discount your prices. You're going to make it up in value. Just sell, 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 whatever you do, sell. And then by the way, be responsible. Don't just get debt, pay your bills, pay your bills, sell, 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 and pay your bills. And then whatever's left is profit. But the problem with that most entrepreneurs find is that 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 number at the end of the year, most of them don't even know it until their accountant tells them how much they have due, right? <laughs> and most of them don't even understand what that bottom line is. And so literally, you know, what Mike was saying was flip the equation, flip the equation, pay your profit first. Revenue minus profits equals expenses. So once you figure out what your profit is, pay your profit first, and then whatever's left, make expenses. And by the way, if you don't have enough money to make those expenses, adjust accordingly. Mm, yeah, one of the top things when we actually, if, you, if you're listening to this and you didn't hear our interview with Mike, go back and listen to that. I think it's been a couple of years since we did that. But one of the things that stuck out to me as we implemented this process as well was just how when you put a rain on expenses, you get creative and you start looking at the things that you, you're paying money for and you say, wait a minute could we do without this? I mean, is there something else I could do instead of this? Is there an alternative that would be cheaper or I could use the technology to, to simplify this or whatever it may be? And it's amazing how you can just find money doing that. Yeah, so Suzanne, speaking on that, Joey, give us some hacks, if you will. Share some hacks with us of just a few of the things that business owners are spending dollars on that probably they don't want to but don't know that they are that could help bring their expenses in and help increase their profit. 
You know, I like to start with the easy ones, you know, okay. start with the easy ones. They boost your self-esteem. They go, oh yeah, this is totally possible, right? So start with the easy ones. So the first thing I would do is, you know, take your financial statements, right? If you're using QuickBooks, use QuickBooks. And one of the great features about QuickBooks is you can drill down, right? You can drill down every expense category. So if you're running a profit and loss statement, you know, go ahead and 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 drill down and and sort them. Sort them by your your biggest expense to your largest expense. So, you know, take your your PL, dump into Excel and just sort it, right? And start with the smallest things first. You know, look at those dues and subscriptions, right? Those things that repeat each, itself year after year after year. And, you know, are there opportunities really there that I can cut those? Am I really using this membership? You know, like right now, come on now, how many of you guys are going to the chamber? commerce event every morning at 7 a.m., right? You probably paid that due 10 years ago for $300 a year. How many of you guys are doing that, right? How many of you guys are doing that in the COVID-19 world? Let's be real about that. You know, if you're using it, it's generating business, it's generating ROI, return on investment for you, let's keep it. But if it's not, let's get it out of there. Let's get it out of there. Um, you know, my kids, you know, they are adorable, absolutely adorable, both of them. And, and their school, you know, they love the fundraise, right? And so every year they bring these lovely catalogs to me, fill with color of of all these Oprah magazines that I can buy, you know, all these like, you know, bizarre Harper Bazaar magazines, and I buy them. And guess what? They auto renew. They auto renew every single year, and then they bring me another catalog to buy more because you know my kids are chicken, you know, uh, winner winner chicken dinners. You know, they have to win the uh, the class pizza party. And so, mommy, they know mommy's gonna buy magazines for her office, which by the way we hardly use anymore because of COVID. You know, what expenses do you have that you're not using anymore? So let's start with the easy ones, right? Start with the easy ones, sort your expenses from largest to smallest, you know, also the other thing I recommend is, you know, you know, look at your employees, right? Look at chargeability. How, how many hours are they really being billable? You know, one of the things we like to see in profit first is a ratio of, you know, at least 150,000 per employee. Now this is just a rule of thumb. It's not necessarily a hardcore rule, right? If you're hiring a bunch of doctors, you can't obviously do 150,000 per employee, right? So, so look at it that way. Um, you know, are, am I, is there a way, can I do things on less? Do I have, you know, what's my spread of employees, my A, B, and C players, right? You'll notice that your A, your A players are probably doing the C players work, right? So how can we gracefully let those C players go? And right now, since everybody's getting unemployment, right? You know, this is a great time to let people go and they can have pride when they apply for the next job because, hey, they just got laid off because of COVID, right? So, <laughs> so, so some very, very easy wins that you can have right now. The other advice I would say is don't jump in and try to get to target allocation percentages immediately. So in Profit First, we have what we call target allocation percentages. And that's how much money in terms of percentage of your revenue that's going to go to owner's pay, what percentage typically goes to profit, what percentage goes to tax, and what we call a healthy company, right? And, you know, and, and if you're not at those target allocation percentages, you know, you're not going to go there overnight, right? I like to say it's kind of like dieting. You know, I would never put you on a no food diet, right? If I put you on a no food diet, you probably won't live past day three. You won't come back, right? So what I'm going to say is we're going to make slow, gradual changes. We're going to cut the sugars week one, right? We're going to cut the carbs week two. And gradually, we're going to change your diet so that it becomes more of a lean protein and maybe even a vegan vegan diet if that's your thing, right? So that's the same way with profit first. We're going to have quarterly goals every single quarter to help you get to your target allocation percentage. So start slowly. Don't jump in and get there immediately. We don't want to put your business in shock and we don't want to put you in shock. No doubt. Joey, did you notice how many times she referenced A players? Do you remember one of one mm. of my favorite books? Yeah. Darren Hardy's Entrepreneur Ro Roller Coaster. Exactly. I love that. I love that you're talking about A players. That's, that's so cool because it really is. Our employees are the people who help make our business go. We need to invest in processes and people, and that will equal income. And I love how you went through your, your own personal journey of struggling with that, trying to do everything yourself. And, and that is a, a problem that people face that they don't um, know how to get out of. So as a uh, profit professional, uh, someone that uh, is able to uh, coach people all over the country, they come to you and they ask questions all the time. So I want to kind of go to maybe some more of the advanced things. So you gave us some really um, easy ones. I love that. Let's talk about some of the problems that people face that, who've been doing this for a while, who've been implementing profit first and are getting stuck. Where are some of those areas and how can they get unstuck? It really depends on their level, right? It depends on where they are with their journey. You know, some of the things that I see that's common with those that that struggle is they try to jump in too fast, too quickly, right? 
and, you know, dip your toe in the water, you know, cut, like I said, cut the little things first, you know, you might not be ready to do a whole reorg, right? <laughs> that, that, you know, there's still some cross training that needs to happen, right? Um, and then don't beat yourself up, you know, you know, if it's taken a little bit longer, you know, so I would say, you know, that's the first thing, you know, everybody wants to jump to target allocation percentages, but they're not ready, right? Because there's an emotional change, there's a mental change, mindset change that has to happen too, as you're implementing profit first, right? Um, and then the other thing is you have to define what does winning look like for you? What does winning look like for you, right? And I always say, let's define it upfront. Let's define it before we begin, right? Because if we define it before we begin, right, when we get there, we know it, right? Because, you know, your goal may not be to actually get to target allocation percentages at the end of the day. Maybe you're happy with allowing yourself to have more work-life balance, right? And not necessarily be, you know, and, and maybe that's important to you. And so knowing what winning looks like up front will help you implement the changes and know what changes to make right before you get there, right? Because, you know, you have to know what winning it looks like before you begin. So, you know, you got there when you, when you were there. Let me, let me ask a follow-up question for you personally, as you, took this whole profit first on in the midst of just basically your backs thrown out, you're high on pain medicine, whatever. Um, talk about how that has, has basically transformed your business personally as a result of implementing this. Right. Well, you can imagine, you know, 12 years ago, I didn't have the business on my dream, right? I didn't have that. I was, I was doing all the work, you know, now, you know, it's definitely a different story. I, I have all eight players, which I absolutely love every member of our team. You know, one of our, our, actually our tax manager is a, as an attorney, you know, so we've been able to hire high caliber people in our team, you know, because if you don't have margins, right, you can't hire the people that, that you really need to do the job. Right. And um, it's really allowed me to step out of my business too. Right. And and to be able to focus on other things, which is something I couldn't do, you know, when I was like knee deep in tax returns, right? I was surrounded by paper and I couldn't get out. If you can imagine what that looks like filling around with paper. Um, and so, you know, and, you know, financially, you know, I've been able to like, I went to Paris last, last winter, which was awesome to be able to like celebrate your birthday at the Moulin Rouge. Um, so it's really opened up opportunities and it wasn't necessarily that the revenue wasn't already there, but the profitability wasn't there in the beginning because I wasn't prioritizing it. Right. Uh, that's really cool. I, I think a second ago you said something, and I don't want to leave somebody behind who might not know what we're referring to. And that is, you, you talked about target allocation percentages. What are just can you go through those categories and give an example just so that someone would have a framework to kind of follow along with this? Yeah, definitely. So target allocation percentages are, you know, when we're looking at profit first, we, we're looking at common size financial statements. So that is a percentage of revenue for every single category versus dollars. So what it does is it allows us to compare apples to apples comparison, right? Because, you know, I can't compare a $50 million company to a $500,000 company, right? So by looking at percentages of revenue, I can now make a comparison of how much are they spending on advertising? How much are they, are they spending on owner's compensation? How much is, what percentage is going to profit, right? So it's based upon percentages. And in every company, depending on the revenue bucket, and we have like you know, five different, six different revenue buckets and profit first, right? The first one starts from zero to 250. The last one's from 10 million to 50 million. And every revenue category has a different allocation of revenue to tax, profit, and owners pay it and operating expenses from the other one, right? Because when a company is really small, it's very dependent upon the owner, right? In fact, you know, when a company is very small, 65% of revenue, we're expecting it to go to the owner because that's what a healthy company looks like. Because in a small company, it's a one-man show, right? It's a one-man show. This owner does the work. He's the carpenter. He also does the marketing. He might do the accounting in the background. And he's also like the plumber and the cleaning staff, right? Mm -hmm. He's doing everything. And so we want him to be compensated like that. But now as his company grows, grows to $10 million, right? He's no longer the everything of the company. In fact, he can probably disappear and nobody will notice it, right? He's more of a brand and a founder. And so his his owner's compensation is very, very small. In fact, it's 0% at that point, because now 
he's really relying on the power of his team. And it's 65% at that point operating expense, because now he's got a team that's running it. He's got managers. He may actually have a CEO that's different from himself that's running this company. And so these percentages change over time. And so what Profit First Professionals has done and Mike McAllis have done is they've done a study on what healthy companies look like. Based of, and, and they created this chart. And um, I think you guys are going to ask how to contact me later on. They can download this chart from where they're going to contact me later on. But literally, you can see common size wise what a healthy company looks like based upon the revenue that's generated from your company. So, you know, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you for going through that. And uh, as Russ and I have gone through it, we ran into some challenges early on just trying to understand all that. So it's great to know that there's folks like you out there that can help kind of coach people along the way. Um, talk about, uh, you mentioned it earlier, but talk about like your passion project now, this book that you're co-authoring with Mike. Um, where did that come from? And, and tell us a little bit more about that. You know, um, it is a passion project. It's Profit First for Minority Business Enterprises. And obviously I'm a minority, so I feel like I can <laughs> I can speak from that story. And a lot of times, you know, and I can probably say it's probably like that for other business owners too. A lot of times we were Gen 1, right? We're Gen 1 in our family to, you know, if we go to college, to so have graduated from college, we're Gen 1 to start businesses. And, you know, if we're going to grow a business that succeeds, we're probably Gen 1 in making that happen too. And what happens when you're Gen 1 is you don't, you're not inheriting a legacy of this is how business is run. Here's a book of business for you. We're creating this ourselves, right? And even though you might go to the best business schools, you know, very few of them will teach you actually how to run a successful business, right? Especially using the profit first concept. And so, you know, and there, there's a whole element to it besides just the physics of moving money, which is required in profit first to pay yourself first. You know, there's mindset, there's, there's things with government contracting. If you go that route, you know, there's tax strategy too that you may not be aware of. And so my book really is geared towards that Gen 1 entrepreneur. And it allows them to not only implement profit first, but to really be able to scale a multi-million dollar business using the profit first concepts. That's really cool. And I think too, it, it sounds like because you're Gen 1 and and you're, you're talking to that as a way to also be able to educate Gen 2 in our lives and Gen 5 that we haven't even had a chance to meet and we'll, might not ever be able to meet. And I, Joey and I talk a lot about that in our four-step process. Four, the fourth step is cherish. And inside of cherish, it is teaching um, how to pass down more than just money, but pass down the way that we got it and how to keep it and the values that go with it. So I love, uh, I love the fact that you're writing a book. How close are you to that being out? I'm really, I would love to uh, be able to pick it up and read it. Oh, it's about to go to copy edit. So they're about to fix my typos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's going to come out um, 2021. We're expecting it probably around March or so. You know, whenever you're writing a book with Mike, it, it goes to probably a lot of additional steps than what you would do if you would self-publish the book. Um, because, you know, it goes to typesetting. There's galleys where like the pre-published copy goes out to special influencers and special people that get copies of it ahead of time. Um, so we're looking at probably March 2021 of it coming out. So you said you're going to send us one ahead of time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I heard that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, th this has been so informative. I, I do want to uh, point our listeners to you as, as business owners. If you haven't had a chance to, to take control of this area where you are paying yourself the profit first, and it is reverse thinking, right? And, and if you're listening to our, our podcast for any length of time, you realize we don't follow the rules, uh, quote unquote, the way the world plays them, because we feel like those rules are written for them to win and not for us. When you decide that the profit is the first thing that comes to us, and then we can decide what the expenses are after that, we can control that aspect. So Suzanne, please tell our listeners how they can reach you and get in touch with you. The best way to reach me is directly through our Profit First Masterclass. Um, we hold a masterclass um, in our private Facebook group. And you can search me in, in Facebook groups, Profit First Masterclass with Suzanne Mariga. And in that class, we're going to teach you the ins and outs of Profit First for free. It's a week-long training, an hour a day, where we go through a different concept than Profit First. And we just deep dive into Profit First to help you implement that in your business. Well, we would totally put that in the show notes. I totally encourage you to do that. Reach out to Suzanne because this is something that can allow you to not uh, 
decide to go get a job, <laughs> take your own business and make it profitable. So that way you can hire more people and get more of your life back. Thank you so much, Suzanne, for being on the show with us today. Well, thank you for having me. It's been, it's been fun. And thank you for listening. As always, we will see you next week. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.